everyone. Good morning, good uh, afternoon, good evening, uh, good night, whatever applies to each of you. Uh, we will pray together and then we'll you know get started for this morning session. I want to request anyone who is comfortable from where you are to please lead. Uh, can I pray, ma? Yes, please, Louis. Thank you. Father, we thank you for such an awesome time in the history of humanity. We thank you that you've gathered us together to burn the fires of the Lord upon your altar in knowledge and in truth. We pray for our pastor. We pray for every one of ourselves that you give us an understanding heart, a heart that is meek and humble to receive the teachings of a priest that we might restore the tabernacle of David upon this time, so God. We thank you that we are in season and on time in the, se in the sequence of your counsel for our lives. We take this truth to establish the kingdom of God in these seasons. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Louis. Um, really appreciate it. Uh, uh, Louis, it's, it's 4.30 a.m. Oh, well, Louis yes, is. Yes, yeah, <laughs> so yeah, so grateful and um, inspired that you know you wake up every day so early to catch up, uh, you know, on the classes. So something to really learn from. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you Louis. Thank you God so bless. much, Thank you so much. Yeah. God bless. Okay, so now uh, we've been uh, talking about the apostolic. And we will pick up from where we stopped. Uh, I know that in the last class, I kind of did an overlap. I um, restarted from the chapter that I already touched on because I felt that um, we we need we need clarity okay? um, in uh, understanding who an apostle is and uh, what the features of the apostolic anointing are. Mm, so thank you for bearing with me. Um, so many things were overlapping the last two classes. Uh, today we will move forward. This is uh, from chapter four in our uh, notes. So if you have your notes with you, you could please turn to it. Chapter four. And let me see if I can also, yeah, chapter four. Just try to um, complete this for today. So, so far, I think we have a, a good fair idea of what the apostolic entails. Uh, so continuing to look at the function and characteristics of the apostolic ministry. And here it says present day apostolic because we no longer can fit into the apostles of the lamb category or the founding apostles category. So another term that you may want to um, consider for all the other apostles is present day. Mm depending on you know the the uh, the current functions which they have um so we are very clear on that you know we we can't go back and uh, fit into the the roles and the functions of the past apostles so uh talking about apostolic ministry today uh, you'll notice that um it continues to carry governmental authority uh, whenever we um refer to the apostolic office very much like your prophetic office the teacher the role of a pastor and evangelist it comes with governmental authority so government if you recall um i i mentioned in the last class uh first corinthians 12 28 the term government uh looking at the greek uh, terminology uh, it is kuber which means steer okay or it directs government directs um or, or it um moves people forward in a focused way and that is that is what it is so there is governmental authority where uh, one is that uh, there is direction but there's also uh, a great great sense of um, you know power in that in that calling or in that position so the offices have governmental 
authority uh, in other words you know there's great responsibility and uh, they also need to be greatly accountable to god for the anointing that god has uh, poured upon them then uh, we see that in the office of the prophet as we looked at the life of apostle paul god really shaped him and provided him with the opportunities to uh, grow into godly character now god does this for everybody um but there is a specific you you could say that it's so important for someone who would be in a position of responsibility to really be shaped by the opportunities that god brings their way to have godly character because um they would lead others they would make decisions uh and all these all these things really make an impact on not just one individual but many many people so which which is why uh, we we it's very easy to understand why god would want a godly character for a person in the offices uh, especially the apostolic office then spiritual gifts that needs to be a manifestation of spiritual gifts to uh, glorify and honor god mm, then you know the ability to pioneer this is if if at all you forget everything about the apostolic um you know if you can remember this this is one of the key points or the main points that apostles are pioneers they they go where nobody has gone before or they do things that nobody has thought of before okay so pioneer is the term that we that we use or you break new ground isn't it to come up with something new so that is uh one of the functions that you will observe in the um apostolic anointing and thereby in the office of an apostle they uh by doing so uh, what is their intention they extend the kingdom of god uh, we are talking about um um a spiritual kingdom here so you know it's not little that you're taking over regions and geographical um, territories in the world that's not that's not what we are uh, referring to but this is more of a spiritual extension of the kingdom of god the way jesus uh, taught us he said thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven um then reaching reaching people as the great commission says uh, going to all the world so you know all the world is the uh, is the field for us to step into and uh, the apostolic does that who go searching for new communities new people groups um you know new territories and and share the gospel people who have never heard the gospel before um to reach them to establish all them in the kingdom of god so now that is also very important in the apostolic remember we said that an ambassador is the closest uh, example right uh, that that we have for the spiritual apostle uh, because in the in the olden days they would send forth an ambassador and today i think the ambassador ambassador ambassadors that we see their roles have slightly changed but going back to the times of the early church uh, they would go to a region uh, settle themselves and begin to establish the culture the value the principles the standards of their own nation so they would do that until they subdue the the new uh, territory or the new kingdom so you know it, uh, if one goes to that place you know maybe it was uh, it, it had a, um, i'm just i'm just using some term now like a southern culture uh, and the uh, ambassador is from the northern uh, you know nations so you would find that the ambassador would work in such a way that um, the entire uh southern uh, region now has a northern culture so you know that is the biblical understanding when we say apostle uh, we here uh, are going to bring the kingdom of god such that the principles of the kingdom the values of the kingdom the standards of the kingdom are also established so it's more than okay uh, people are saved wonderful you know we rejoice in it it's taking moving to the next level and the next level where we are establishing them in the things of the word of god 
so also you know word of god now that i mentioned it uh, the apostolic has the feature of um, settling people in the truth and the order of god's word um, yes and of course you know uh, coming talking about the governmental aspects uh, there is the administration or the oversight of god's people or local churches so uh keeping in line with this you know we'll just try to paint the picture of who an apostle is uh now that we're doing it um, i also want to let us know that we may not find all these features in one person okay but it just helps us understand the apostolic anointing so why is it important to understand a certain anointing when we studied about the prophetic we said that uh, the revelation gifts are active um, uh, in the uh, prophetic anointing so that way we know that god will reveal his heart and that is why we are looking for it okay or we are we are seeking the prophetic anointing we know that it will bless the body of christ and so you know we are after the prophetic anointing we know that it can increase it can release the supernatural so in understanding something we are able to um uh, you know experience we are able to experience we are able to appreciate uh, all the things that god is doing through that particular anointing now what if we don't define it you know it will just be it will just be very vague um, and um, uh, you know one is that we will not appreciate it second is we won't know how to uh, fully fully step into it full and you know that is problematic because when god is doing so much in in the world today uh, it's very important for us to understand and then you know begin to walk in it uh, just uh, take for example the prophetic um were people prophesying throughout history throughout the ages very much they were prophesying but then uh, uh, the the thing is they probably did not have the the words to explain what was going on but uh, as time has gone by you know we see that people now have language to describe um you know dreams visions uh the prophetic revelation that you know you need to you need to first receive it and you have to interpret it so it's only in the last um season you know i'm just saying season for uh, so that it, we don't have to specify the number of years uh, but it's only in the last season that you you notice we are able to describe it with words and that helps because we can have classes like this where we can equip people with what we know what we can um, you know define so the same holds good for the apostolic so when we are able to define it when we are able to understand it we can we can pass on the knowledge and uh, you know there's there's um, a, a greater opportunity for people to see what god is doing in our day and in our time and that is why we are making this effort to understand the apostolic anointing and thereby you know the functions the characteristics the features of a an apostle okay so uh, just um, bear with me we are we're trying to understand it okay so that's that's the whole thing uh, and there could be some repetition from the last uh, couple of classes as well so uh, what do apostles do apostles pioneer okay they pioneer so there are some passages of scripture here uh, it will be helpful to read at least one second corinthians 10 verses 13 through 16 uh, would anyone be able to read that second corinthians 10 13 through 16 ram can i read yes yes please alasha okay second corinthians 10 kind of 13 to 16 uh, i hope you can hear me yes okay. yes okay second corinthians chapter 10 verse 13 to 16 i'm reading from the esv 
in the standard version. But you will not boost beyond limits. But will boost only with regard to the area of influence God assigned to us to reach even to you. For we are not overextending ourselves as though we did not reach you. For we were the first to become all the way to you with the gospel of Christ. We do not boast beyond limits in the labors of others. But our hope is that as your faith increases, our area of influence among you may be greatly enlarged so that we may preach the gospel in lands beyond you without boasting of work already done in other areas of influence. Amen. Okay, so thank you, Elisha. Thank you for reading. Uh, so that very clearly um, shows the pioneer spirit where... Uh, okay, Elisha, I think there's some echo. Uh, if you don't mind, if you could please mute the... Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yes. So it shows the pioneering spirit where Paul is talking about um, the appointment by God to a sphere and uh, that he, along with you know his team, uh, have reached the Corinthian uh, people and that they are desiring to keep extending um, uh, you know, their, their reach to many other people many other uh, territories okay so you you see very clearly that that they um, are pioneering or going into new places and from there extending into other new places so we've we've got this that picture okay so if you if you're going to remember anything about apostle pioneer pioneer is one word that you know uh, you must remember so pioneer uh, and first Corinthians 12 28 also has something to tell us. Uh, could somebody please read this passage or this verse? 1 Corinthians 12 28. Uh, can I take that again? Yes, yes, please, Elisha. Um, 1 Corinthians 12, 28. Mm. 1 Corinthians 12, 28. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, helping, administrating, and various kinds of tongues. Amen. Mm. Yeah, thank you. All right. So uh, here you notice that God is appointed in the church and it says first apostles. OK, so what does first mean? First means being those pioneers or the ones who, mm, you know, the ones who step out of the boat first. OK. Uh, and if you look at the word there, first is the Greek word proton, which means first in time or, you know, they went first. Um, it can also mean first in order, rank or importance. So the understanding is that they move in first, they break ground. Okay, so that is their feature or their character. So apostles are first in what? First in what? First in moving to new territories, okay? expanding into, it could be physical territories. You know, the way we have, um, you know, uh, let's say a country like India, there are so many states. Let's uh, maybe the ministry started in one particular state, but then eventually as God's grace increases over that ministry, you know, they are, they are, they have a presence in different states, many states, maybe all the states, and then eventually, uh, you know, touching many nations of the world. So what's happening here? Like you're breaking ground into new territories. You're extending. These are the terms in the Christian circle that we hear, extend the kingdom of God. So this is what it is to, to move into 
um, uh, or or begin to impact the lives of more people in new places then first in understanding the truth as well or the revelation of god's word uh, remember yesterday i gave an example i said that we will never try to rewrite what the founding apostles have put in place for us that's not the new revelation which we are talking about but we are we do understand that you know god gives depth um he provides you know the meaning in a very relevant way for our time and our season and we find that apostles tend to have this anointing even when it comes to you know a new understanding of things new revelation you know um, uh, and uh, uh, dis discovering new truths okay so I, by now you know what i mean by new truths they pioneer they pioneer even in this area and the, talking about pioneering you know they go ahead of others so this simply means that they are willing to do things first or step in first you know, like peter he stepped out of the water okay nobody had ever done that before but jesus had come he he just stepped out of the water he stepped out first so that is the apostolic uh, uh, anointing that is also you know what what uh, apostles are like you know they pioneer they um, receive the truth new truths revelation go to new territories and also they lead from the front because they have the courage to step out first now because we have looked at first corinthians 1228 where you know it it seems to give us an order or a ranking first apostle then prophets then you know so somehow uh, there is this understanding in the christian world that apostles are greater than prophets pastors teachers evangelists but when we study the term proton there first in time simply means somebody who initiates okay so that doesn't mean that there is an hierarchy in the fivefold uh, ministry offices a good example for us to consider is the trinity we usually you know we would say that the father is greater jesus said the father is greater than i but then you look at other passages where uh, you know the by the father and i are one so when you try to understand the mystery of the trinity you recognize that all the three persons of the godhead are co-equal so though we say though we see in in some verses that the father is greater it doesn't mean that there is a there is an hierarchy but there is a function that we are talking about uh, and yet there is a harmony in which you know the father the son and the holy spirit coexist the holy spirit is the helper that doesn't make the holy spirit below the father and the son okay so there's no hierarchy like even when you talk about the trinity similarly when it comes to the fivefold ministry offices based on 1 corinthians 1228 we must not interpret that the apostle is highest as compared to the other ministry offices and and you know it's been interpreted that way and which is why uh, you i don't know if you have observed or not but sometimes people tend to treat uh people with the calling of an apostle you know uh, much better than uh, somebody who has a different calling so uh, but that's not how the scripture uh, is uh, that that's not what the scripture is saying okay so uh, yeah i think that brings us clarity uh, we continue to paint the picture of an apostle okay we understood that apostle is a pioneer apostle is a pioneer okay there is a question yes yes elisha please okay um thank you pastor um yeah. with respect to uh what you are sharing on apostles as in uh do they not been of higher in rank among the other leaders uh in some denominations um 
it seems not to be the case because I see the rank very clear such that um, you start as an uh, overseer, you move to pastor, then um, sometimes even to evangelist, then finally apostle, apostleship is seen as the last rank that a person can be promoted to. And I see this as causing others to cut and cut the ground of others, others seeking self-promotion. Because of that, they do a lot of things that you least expect men of God to do. And um, I think it's, it should give the body of Christ a cause of worry. So if, um, what are some of the challenges that you think could arise when we emphasize on the ranks among these callings of God in the church? Uh, yeah, thank you, Elisha. As you've shared, um, that that's what I'm saying. The way this scripture has been interpreted, um, it leads to wrong application, and uh, any wrong application will have its consequences. Um, and and uh, what could be the the effects? Uh, that was your question. Uh, I think the striving for positions, you know, uh, because whenever you say that something is the greatest, it's human tendency to want that. Uh, and, and so among among those who are serving God um, with the given callings, you know, we might have people, um, let's say I, I recognize that I'm called to be a pastor, but then uh, I'm told that if you serve well, then you could be an apostle. And so, you know, I, I kind of tr strive to move towards that. Uh, and it causes a lot of confusion. So I, I think that's what... Uh, would happen and the other challenge would be that uh, someone who has the calling of an apostle uh, will feel that hey you know god's given me the greatest calling there's no calling beyond mine uh, and so you know if that gets into somebody's head uh, uh, uh Hopefully it, it shouldn't because every ministry, ministry itself is served. It means service. Uh, but then if it does, then as you said, you know, the, the people end up doing things that, you know, it, it, that should never be mentioned of uh, people of God, let alone, you know, a servant of God. Uh, so, yeah, these could be some of the issues, uh, Elisha. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, yes, thank you. Yes, yes, Louis. Yeah, I I can see your raised hand. Okay, okay, ma um, just to add to what you're saying, if you permit me, uh, one other concern um, I've noticed over time is people use their personal dealings with God as doctrines when they want to communicate it in mentorship and um, discipleship. Um, so God has taken it to a part of training over the years and to you, it has become a doctrine that you want to teach the people, not necessarily the scale of preference, what God has um, set in the word of God. So that's why Paul will say um, the foundation is the apostles and the prophets. So it's trying to put a balance to it. So sometimes you have to be careful not to preach um, our personal experiences as doctrine, or rather to preach the word of God as doctrine, laying the foundations correctly. Because if you don't do that, the next generation is going to take it as the word of God, which is not the word of God. So by the time we get to like the third generation, we are building something way different from what the fathers has laid. And sometimes I think that's what we do as um, pioneers or people that God has set forth into kind of ministries or different kinds of ministries. Thank you, man. Yes, thank you, Louis. Thank you for that observation. That's right. So if you move away from the word and... Uh, um, use experiences that's problematic and it only gets worse as uh, you know generations uh, by um, generations by generations uh, you know move on so same thing applies even when it comes to the prophetic I uh, just I want to make a point here uh, dreams visions uh, people also talk about you know encounters and um, nothing wrong with it wonderful these things are real People do have encounters, but 
then what happens is uh, when it comes to ministering to the people and share god's word you know if if i say something like okay i had uh, an encounter with god and these 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 things happened i could be correct i could be incorrect now for the listeners there's no way to validate it's very subjective uh, and i don't want to base the equipping of god's people on my experiences so no experiences are valuable we share them every you know now and then but as louis pointed out don't make doctrines out of it and don't um, you know make that the primary content of our um, uh, ministry Okay, so we really have to be very careful about that. Okay, moving forward here. So now we've understood, you know, pioneer, and we've also understood that uh, a ranking uh, is in time. They they are the earliest in time. Okay, so they step in first. Uh, so that's how you know the first apostle is understood, not necessarily uh, an era, uh, a structure of. structure or hierarchy then uh, moving on to another feature of an apostle is they uh, lay foundations for lasting works now uh, scriptures tell us ephesians 2:20 that the church is built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets so when it comes to the apostle like practically you would notice that they they um they they start you know new things or um they plant new churches so you know in a way their work is very very important very crucial and it is very foundational so their their work is foundational okay and they lay the foundation for lasting work so you might know of uh, certain movements uh, church planting movements that was started by a certain uh, individual now if you go back to that one individual uh, through the anointing you know upon their lives they would have set the standards you know god's uh, supernatural power would have uh, been you know just Uh, been shown in a in a mighty way uh, that set a precedent okay and uh, so these are, some things are really good so when they set the standards they they would have set standards of you know integrity uh, they would have set standards of uh, humility uh, they would have you know set certain standards supernatural power of god now the entire movement will kind of shape Uh, after that uh, and uh, thankfully you know those things will be like a boundary or those things will be like um, uh, you know something that defines what goes on uh, in the ministry or in the movement generally we use terms like movements that that start off through apostles so um, uh, they are they do the foundational work and uh, they do the lasting work then moving forward you know apostles execute divine plans on the earth impacting cities and nations that again you know it's quite uh, understandable uh, as god reveals what he wants done um, they are the ones who step in and make that happen apostles also guard doctrine now going back to the uh, apostles of the lamb and the early apostles again acts 15 is your uh, example where there there was the false teaching that a gentile also needed to follow uh, jewish traditions including circumcision and that circumcision was essential for salvation so when you read about that in acts 15 you notice that barnabas and paul they literally fought with the people who were bringing in this wrong teaching so the apostolic is also about guarding the doctrine you know sometimes there's wrong doctrine going around and uh, you would find somebody with the apostolic calling you know rising up putting the right doctrine out there and contending the wrong teaching um, you know that that could damage the the lives of god's people so you know they're very passionate about the right doctrine even to the corinthian church you know, paul wrote and uh, you know he he um, corrected them 
about their practice of uh, communion in first corinthians chapter 11 uh, apparently they would just come and it would be more like a party and people would get drunk on uh, the wine and so he brings sharp correction and he says please don't do it like this you need to honor the table of the lord and then you know he continues to say that okay i will um, this is something that i am writing to you about but when i come you know i will i will uh, you know talk to you then so quite strict because they are uh, very serious about preserving the right doctrine. Uh, so yeah, in, in manners uh, such as these, you will find the apostles and the apostolic anointing work. Then uh, apostles also have um, uh, a capability of teaching God's word okay, and uh, revealing the truth of God's word. Now, what happens through that is that God's people are established. In Acts 20, verse 32, Paul spoke to the leaders of the Ephesian church and he said that, you know, I commend you to the word because the word will build you up. So, the word has the capability of shaping, nurturing, maturing God's people. And which is why the apostles saw the truth of God's word in people's lives. You know, if you look at the ministry of Apostle Paul, it's amazing because you know, he made an effort. You, know, you would see him um, working very hard uh, like an architect. You know, he, he goes, plants churches, then he comes back, he appoints leaders. You know, he spends time in certain places in Ephesus. He sp uh, spends uh, a couple of years. He spends time in, I don't know what other place, Corinth? Yeah, I think so. So, you know, he spends time in different places because he understands the importance of bringing people to a level of maturity in God's words, God's word. And then he also warns uh, the Ephesian church. He says, look, you might have wrong doctrines coming in later, which is why you need to know the right doctrine well. So uh, then he says, okay, I commend you to God's word, uh, which will build you up. But the point is also that he did spend a lot of time teaching them God's word. Now, if you look at Paul in the prison in the city of Rome, uh, it's uh, incredible again, because it says that he was talking about the things of the kingdom from morning to night. How can you, like, what is there to talk from morning to night? There is so much of revelation, so much of truth that needs to be spoken into the lives of God's people. And that is important because it will, it will you know, give them that standing and establish them in the uh, truth of God's word. So the apostles have that feature of strengthening people in God's, we call it whole counsel, whole counsel, whole counsel as a port as opposed to, you know, um, uh, I, I don't want to use the terminology, but like, you know, we like some doctrines and sometimes the tendency is to teach only those doctrines. Okay, uh, I'm just saying like, let's say God's grace. And I only say God's grace, God's grace, God's grace. Is there anything wrong? No, because it's very scriptural. But whole counsel, whole counsel is when, I understand scripture in its wholeness. You know, while I say that, okay, God loves you, God will accept you, God will forgive you, I must also teach that God is a holy God, that God is a God of truth, God is a God of justice, then it's whole counsel. Otherwise, you know, it's like, um, you know, one or two, one doctrine and I, I, I'm only teaching God's people on that one particular thing, then I miss out on the whole counsel of God's word. So the apostolic is passionate about the whole counsel of God's word. Then apostles activate and equip believers for spiritual ministry. And obvious because uh, Ephesians 4 says, why did God give the fivefold ministry offices for the equipping of the saints? Verse 11. So, what is what are these anointings for ministry what is ministry service we are here to serve and in fact uh, if you want to use the term or oh, rank you know god has given the greatest rank um, to somebody as a pastor or a prophet that's your you're a great servant <laughs> that's what it means so with that should come great humility because we are only here to serve 
and what are we here to serve people uh, for or uh, toward for maturity we are here to build people up so that they can also you know, do the work of the ministry so that they can continue to serve god the way god is calling them so uh, apostles are here to activate and equip believers so our focus is believers have to mature and that is what we are working towards then apostles raise up and release others we've talked about this earlier the way paul was a father to so many people you know, he had um, he built people up and what did he do did he we observed that he appointed leaders and he just didn't abandon them but he worked with them to develop them and uh, you know at, at the right time we we see that you know they grew up uh, into a, 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 a stage uh, where people like timothy they could handle you know churches so uh, apostles raise up they raise up leaders they release them at the right time uh, and you you would see this feature they continue to connect they continue to coordinate uh, you know with with leadership then apostles establish order in and among churches just the way i told uh, us uh, paul dealt with the corinthian church and he wanted things to be done in a proper way so uh, you know apostles will instruct they will bring god's word and say hey come on you know this needs to be corrected we have to move towards purity and holiness and righteousness and you know all of that so you know they establish god's order if you consider the writings of apostle paul that's what you would see order in the family order in the church community um a uh, uh, order in the way you know the way we treat civil government uh, so they they like to talk about you know bringing in order uh, in lifestyle order within the church as well you know leadership how do you honor uh, leadership who do you appoint as leaders um, what should be uh, what should uh, worship look like so they speak order into everything they also uh, you know uh, again i said pioneer pioneer is a picture then um, somebody laying the foundation is a picture of an apostle but also uh, you know somebody who is leading okay so leading will involve uh, setting the standards spelling out the rules um, uh, it also uh, describes somebody who will step in to manage crisis remember i said in the corinthian church they had an issue of uh, a person falling into sexual sin so you know paul was there saying hey come on you need to take this up seriously and deal with the matter you know, don't shove things under the carpet we have to deal with it so similarly if you go back to act 6 you know, they had a problem uh, of uh, widows not being fed um, uh, and two communities could have fought with each other and that could have been uh, a division in the early church uh, you know of the first century but the beautiful way in which the apostles dealt okay here's a problem fix the problem so they also manage crisis uh, in the church they make decrees uh, after the acts 15 you know discussion and the council meeting in jerusalem they said okay now this word about being circumcised um uh, is is being taught to the gentiles everywhere we have to put an end to it let's make a decree so what did they do they set things in stone and they said okay come on we are we have the authority here and we are making this decree that a gentile or a non jewish person does not need to you know be circumcised you don't have to be circumcised to be saved so it was very clear if the apostle said it period that's it no questions asked and even if you know there was wrong teaching going around people could go back and refer to the decree which was made in jerusalem and say that hey come on this is false teaching because the apostles have already said that you know one does not need to be circumcised so you know they make things very clear for the body of christ so that there is no ambiguity there's no confusion and you know ob obviously following wrong doctrine leads to uh, consequences and uh, you know destruction unfortunately some some of the things uh, can make a huge uh, impact on people's lives uh, and so you know we uh, the apostles are, are very um, cautious and they make decrees about the right right doctrine um 
apostles are also the ones to speak to leaders and authorities. Um, we see in the calling of Paul, um, right in early on on the road to Damascus, when when Jesus speaks, you know, he says that you will stand before kings. You will stand before you know, leaders uh, for my sake. You will go through a lot of suffering. So it was very clear that God would use the apostle to um, uh, speak to the leaders of, of the land. Okay, so uh, for lack of time, I'm just stopping here. But I think we are getting, uh, you know, the understanding of what an apostle is. So I, I still have to touch on a few things in this chapter. We'll do that and then uh, continue uh, in the next class. So uh, let me stop here. Any any quick questions? Oh, it's already 9.50. Uh, so please don't mind. Hold on to your questions. Uh, we will try and answer it in the next class. Okay, so thank you. Thank you once again for being here this morning. Let's um, wrap up with a word of prayer. Uh, I just leave it open. Anyone who can, you're free to pray. Okay, madam, can I pray? Yes, please, Elisha. Okay. Our Heavenly Father, once again, we are grateful and thankful unto you for the grace and the mercy that you've granted us to gather here under your feet, O oh God, to study and to learn about you. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that as we study these things, O oh God, may you practically pull us into the various ministries that you have called us into, that we will be able to function in the body of Christ and bring people of God to maturity. Father, we pray that, Lord, whatever function, whatever calling that you have placed on each of us, may you grant us the grace to be effective and to be efficient in them in the name of Jesus. That on the day then when we stand before you in judgment, we will not be ashamed. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 Thank you, Elisha. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. Have a great day. A great weekend. See you uh, next week. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Bye. You. Bye. 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 Bye.